Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August the 5th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. This video is going to be a bit controversial. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, really the purpose of my site is to give gamblers a leg up on the casino. Right? It's to figure out some betting strategy that nets you profits over the long run. Right? So for me, the goal here is really to find secretariat. Right? A horse that, by the way, lost multiple races. But we all understand, as I say secretariat, that you're talking about a horse that was just more talented than the other horses of its generation. Right? A horse that did things. That Belmont is still legendary. That really were historical. Right? When you want to talk about the best in a field, whether it's Secretariat, whether it's Usain Bolt, whether it's Floyd Mayweather, right? As a gambler, you want to spot that early. You want to get in early. Just imagine the profits you have right now. If you saw young Floyd Mayweather and you figured out, oh, you know what, this guy's going to win some big fights. Right? Even the fights where he's the smaller man, the De La Hoya fight, where he might be the underdog. Right? You're going to take him and you're going to be rewarded over the long term. Right? When you see big time talent, historical talent. You understand, this guy's gonna have some bad nights. Right? Lennox Lewis lost to Oliver McCall. Right? This guy's gonna have some bad nights. There are gonna be some car crashes. But talent-wise, the guy is never gonna go in the ring at a deficit. In fact, what I found is when you're talking about the very best, they're always underrated. Right? I followed NFL football for a long time. There are only three absolute top shelf shutdown cornerbacks that I've seen, and I've watched it for decades. Michael Haynes, Rod Woodson, and Deion Sanders. Now we can put guys like Jalen Ramsey into the mix and stuff like that, but in your heart you know Jalen Ramsey's not Deion Sanders. Right? I mentioned Lennox Lewis. You know, the bottom line is Lennox Lewis was better than Mike Tyson. Right, Tyson, historical champion, one of the dominant champions in recent memory, had a championship run that might be better than Lennox Lewis's championship run. But does anyone realize that Lennox Lewis went to the Catskills, fought Mike Tyson when Lewis was an amateur, held his own in the ring? You know, Lennox Lewis was always on that Tyson level, and let's face it, Lewis had some things Mike didn't have. Lewis had a back foot. Lewis had a jab. Lewis could actually change speeds in the ring. Even in fights where Lewis was getting roughed up, that Vitaly Klitschko fight, you see Lewis's greatness. Well, there's a fighter like that right now. In my opinion, as highly rated as he is, he's underrated. Right? What do I mean by underrated? I consider Terence Crawford to be the best fighter in the sport pound for pound. 
right? Some days I'll wake up and I'll say, gee, is it Lomachenko? But the thing with Crawford is Crawford is like the Patriots. He's different every fight. Well, I believe this young guy, if he brings his A game and if he figures things out, understand this young guy still doesn't have 17 pro fights. But this young guy has the jab that might be able to jab Crawford to death. Right? Crawford, master tactician. Crawford doesn't have this young guy's power. Right? I feel this young guy, right now, if he were to sign to fight Jamel Charlo, the champ at 154, I believe this young guy beats him, and this young guy is not even a junior welterweight. Right? I think... I think it's rare to see a guy with this many tools. And I'm talking about unbeaten Virgil Ortiz. 16 fights, 16 KOs. His last fight, which happened several days ago, right? I've waited to make this video. I've waited till it's nighttime. Usually I'm making videos early in the morning at the crack of dawn, right? You can actually see me in this video. So I don't even have plausible deniability on this one. But he fought Sammy Vargas, and I'm just telling you, Sammy Vargas fought an inspired fight. Vargas was excellent. He was the KG vet testing the younger fighter. He even came up with a strategy that might be a hole in Virgil Ortiz's game. Right at times, Vargas would go low, duck his head, throw body shots, have some success. I'm guessing guys who can riddle your body, guys who have that skill set, and there are not many of them. Errol Spence, perhaps, may have been excited seeing that portion of the Sammy Vargas fight. But let me just say this, Virgil Ortiz, who stopped Brad Solomon with a jab, Right? It's a listing level jab. Right? Virgil Ortiz against Vargas, who's a decent puncher, made Vargas look like he couldn't punch at all. Because there wasn't a crowd, because of COVID-19, you heard the punches. Virgil Ortiz's punches sounded big, thudding sound. Right, a bat hitting wood. By contrast, Sammy Vargas seemed to have half the power of Virgil Ortiz. Then Ortiz started throwing jabs, folks. The jabs were stiff. In terms of a thudding jab, his jab is one of the best in the sport. Now let's criticize him here. When you're secretariat, people are going to look at you. They're going to say, hey, wait a moment. Right? Secretariat lost these races. Right? Virgil Ortiz, the jab might not be the mobile jab that Errol Spence has. Spence proved me wrong. Spence can get on his back foot and still have a stiff jab. I'll concede that. It's unclear whether Virgil Ortiz can, for a prolonged period of time, against a future Hall of Fame fighter like a Mikey Garcia. Get on his back foot and have the guy running into a jab, which is what Errol Spence pulled off. Right, but understand, Ortiz's jab is a harder jab than Errol Spence's. Right, I pity the man who tries to come in, side, on Virgil Ortiz, even if he's having some success with body shots because Ortiz is going to make you pay for daring to stay in the pocket with him. Let me say this too. I've noticed that really great punchers who understand their punching power are not in a rush. Right? They're also big on spacing. They want to see the action. 
right? They don't want to just run in and start throwing punches. They want to wait for openings. They'll even have you miss a shot before they jump in and do damage. That's very hard to teach. There are many fighters in the sport in their 30s who don't get the benefit of patience. Virgil Ortiz is 22 years old, folks. He already has that figured out. Right, so understand, and I do not say this lightly, this is not flippant. I've thought about this for days. Virgil Ortiz, a guy who has not held a title, he has it. Today, in my opinion, is one of the top 10 fighters in the sport pound for pound. Right? There are very few guys who I think can even compete with him. I think a fight right now between him and Terence Crawford would be boxing at the highest level. Let me say this too. I know fighters are tied to promoters. I don't understand what Errol Spence is doing fighting Danny Garcia. Right? That tells me that Errol Spence doesn't get the lay of the land. Right? If Spence is in it for legacy, really, there are only two fighters he should fight. Right? Terrence Crawford, who wants to fight him. That would be boxing at the highest level. And Manny Pacquiao. Folks, Pacquiao now is in his 40s. If you're a young guy and you want to fight a living legend, now's the time to fight him. How much longer do you think Pacquiao is going to be in the sport? So forgive me, but to me, Errol Spence has taken himself out of the conversation by having a fight against Danny Garcia. And let me say this too, I know Spence is coming back from a car crash. If he loses that fight to Danny Garcia, he's going to be out of the mix. If I'm Terrence Crawford at that point and I want to show people I'm the best at 147 then the person to fight would be Virgil Ortiz let me say this too there is a fighter out there who might be able to give Ortiz problems based on styles trust me they're very few right Erickson Lubin I know Jamel Charlo KO'd him in the first round and I give Charlo credit on that very impressive win, right? Maybe that KO where Lubin goes down off a headshot might be something that excites Virgil Ortiz since Virgil Ortiz today at 147 hits harder than Jamel Charlo does at 154, right? But Lubin is one of the best body punchers in the sport. He can get inside when there's no inside to get. Right? The fact that Sammy Vargas had some success going to the body on Virgil Ortiz might create an opening for an Erickson Lubin. That would be a high level fight. But understand, Ortiz against almost anybody else at 154 would be the betting side of the play. Right? You know, Ortiz is big. I hear he has to lose weight to make weight at 147. I hope he moves to 154. I think this guy can then jump the fence at 154, start fighting at 160. And with this skill set, have a chance to be one of the best middleweights in history. Right? Folks, he has the Carlos Monzon jab. Folks, he has the Carlos Monzon power. I keep hearing announcers say he's 22. Guys, he he's a vet. This guy fights much better much older than he is. He's a technician. 
Let me also say that one of the impressive things with him is he doesn't rely on hand speed. Right? He has hand speed. He's an excellent mover after throwing shots. Right? As I said, he's a vet. But he's not relying on hand speed. Let me also say, too, if you look at his form, he's that heavy puncher who has excellent form. In other words, he sets his feet. He knows how to get his feet in position and use his weight. So I'm not here to say that Virgil Ortiz is going to have an unbeaten career. Right? As I said opening this video, Secretariat lost races. But we're about to embark on about a 10-year period of time. 10 years where this guy to me is going to be among the best pound for pound in the sport right he's going to enter fights against more decorated opponents biased judges right that's the only way I can explain the loss he had as an amateur to Ryan Garcia because he wins that fight Right? Ortiz is going to be places where he's not the hometown favorite. And I believe this guy's going to walk through people. Right, He has a Sonny Liston level jab. What do I mean by that? I mean the jab is a main course. Now this isn't Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes had a great jab too. With Larry Holmes, the jab was the message. With this guy, you're looking at one of the premier punchers in the sport. And then you notice he starts throwing a jab. And you start to say to yourself, my God, where did he get this? It would be like Golovkin suddenly throwing a stiff jab that has you scratching your head. Right, so it takes a lot for me to say, my goodness, this guy is good. Well, that's what I'm saying right here. Right, Terrence Crawford should be favored against Virgil Ortiz. Right, Crawford, after all, was undisputed at 140. Right, Crawford has had more championship fights than Virgil Ortiz, who's never been a champion. Okay, fair enough. But understand, if the odds aren't close to even money, if the odds are staggered, if you're getting better than two to one odds on Virgil Ortiz, folks, that's the side of the play to be on. Right. That's the side of the play to be on. Let's go one step further. I believe if the guy goes to 154, he cleans out that division with the one question mark being a fight against Erickson Lubin, who himself is underrated, who himself is going to go on to several years of dominance. So keep an eye on this guy. 16 and 0. I know, only 16 pro fights. Okay, fair enough. Right? I'll agree. Vargas has his moments. Right? I gave Vargas the second round. I gave Vargas one other round. I believe it was the fourth round or something like that. Right? So Vargas wins multiple rounds. I thought Vargas was fighting one of the best fights of his life. This is a guy who gave Amir Khan problems. But the other guy just had too much talent. That's why you bet on Secretariat. Right, because you see the guy and you just realize he can be out there sleepwalking. But with this level of talent, even when Sammy Vargas is having really a career night, Virgil Ortiz is going to win that fight by stoppage. Right, by stoppage. You're going to see 
dynamics in Virgil Ortiz fights where he's throwing big shots and it looks like the other guy is taking them. Folks, you might as well start looking at your watch. If this guy is landing, the fight's not making it to the eighth round. It's just that simple. Then when you realize that if the guy wants, he can just flick a jab at you for rounds. Right, folks? It's an A-plus level jab. As I said, you want to see a jab pummel a guy, look at the Brad Solomon fight. Right? And Solomon's a guy who I thought style-wise would give Floyd Mayweather a hard time. Right? So Ortiz is a rare talent. I mean a rare talent. Right? He's at 147 right now. I hope since Errol Spence is fighting the Danny Garcias of the world, right? Okay, fair enough and stuff like that. I hope Ortiz pivots. If he can't get meaningful fights at 147, I'd love to see him against Sean Porter. I'd be surprised if Sean Porter, who went the distance against Errol Spence, goes the distance against this guy. Right? If Ortiz can't get the high-level fights right now at 147. Then I hope he moves on to 154. I think he's close to a title veer. That's how I see it. This kid's secretariat, folks. Right? I'm guessing there are going to be some nights that he loses. But you need to get on board right now because he's going to reward gamblers in the long run. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'll be surprised if this guy does not take home multiple titles. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me say this too. Ryan Garcia, promising. Right? Promising can't control spacing like Virgil Ortiz. Teofimo Lopez, excellent counterpuncher, is not as good defensively as Virgil Ortiz. Lomachenko, great fighter. Like, great fighter. He's in his 30s. Boxing's a young man's game. Loma is not a heavyweight, right? Age is the kind of thing that taps you on the shoulder one minute, the next minute it's taking over your life and you're no longer competitive, right? Enjoy the Loma train while it's on the tracks. I do think Loma beats Teofimo Lopez if they can make that fight happen, right? But just understand, this kid's a decade younger, <laughs> a decade younger. He has many years of dominance ahead of him. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.